Let us discuss polycystic ovarian disease. This is a very common disorder and is often manifested in young girls as young as even 13 and 14. Classically, it is associated with a hormone imbalance in the body. There is an increased proportion of androgens, that is male hormones, and a reduced uh, proportion of the female hormone, to put it in lay terms. But what it is associated with is irregular periods and ovulation, meaning that there is no egg production at the normal 12th to 15th day time of the menstrual cycle, because of which there are periods are delayed, there is irregularity, often there is infertility and uh, inability to conceive. Also, they usually have a lot of weight gain, obesity, they may have abnormal hair growth, hirsutism and sometimes after pregnancy is established, they are slightly more prone to repeated miscarriages. Treatment of polycystic ovary is relatively differently phased out depending on the period of life in which the girl is. Before marriage, she usually just needs lifestyle modifications and a program, good program for weight loss which could be a good combination of a nutritionist and a proper a workout or a physical exercise program. Once the girl is married and seeking fertility, we usually need to establish ovulation. Several drugs are available for this purpose such as clomiphene citrate, tamoxifen and if these fail, we move on to injectable hormones, the commonest being gonadotropins. The two types of gonadotropins which we commonly use are follicle stimulating hormone and human menopausal gonadotropin which usually give good results in these patients. Injections of follicle stimulating hormone are given to produce induce egg production and this usually will give a success rate of 20 to 30 percent per month to these patients before they need to go for more aggressive treatments such as in vitro fertilization. For those who do not conceive with simple ovulation induction, we need to move on to maybe intrauterine insemination with ovulation induction using gonadotropin injections or then in vitro fertilization which today is extremely successful for this category of polycystic ovarian disease. In PCOS, we have a unique approach of giving these injections. With the low dose of FSH injections, we expect a good ovarian response but and invariably these patients tend to have a complication known as ovarian hyperstimulation. That means they produce too many eggs. In this kind of a scenario, it is not advisable to have all the eggs releasing inside the body. So in in vitro fertilization, we aspirate these eggs out of the body, we fertilize them with the husband's sperm and we freeze all the embryos by a vitrification process. Subsequently, in the next month, the frozen embryos are transferred back to the uterus with this approach, the patient can expect a 50 to 60 percent chance of pregnancy per cycle if you consider a combination of a fresh embryo transfer and a frozen embryo transfer. So today, for polycystic ovaries, if all usual uh, conventional treatments fail, the best hope for the couple is to go for in vitro fertilization with FSH, a short protocol using a new drug known as a GnRH antagonist and finally, uh, freezing of all the embryos and transfer in subsequent month to reduce the risk or practically eliminate the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation which can sometimes be fatal or even life threatening.